Olá a todos, sejam muito bem-vindos mais uma vez aqui ao canal. Hoje eu trago mais uma legenda do físico Nassim Haramein. E ele nos fala no vídeo de hoje a sua opinião a respeito do experimento da fenda dupla. Aquele experimento que mostra que a realidade agiria de uma forma quando ninguém está olhando e agiria de outra quando estamos olhando. O experimento da fenda dupla tem como principal objetivo ver como se comporta a matéria, se ela se comporta como onda ou como partícula. Com isso concluíram que a matéria age de uma forma quando está sendo observada e de outra quando não está sendo observada, que ela age como partícula quando está sendo observada e age como ondas de possibilidade quando não está sendo observada. Com isso concluíram que a matéria para de agir de forma completamente aleatória na hora em que a observamos, então colapsamos a função de onda. Porém, conhecemos o físico Nassim Haramein, ele não concorda com a ideia de coisas aleatórias no universo, que não expressem alguma consciência, ele é considerado o físico que une a ciência e a espiritualidade, e aqui vai nos dar a opinião dele sobre o que forma a matéria e como ela se comporta. Bom, as coisas do físico Nassim Haramein são todas muito interessantes, essa vai ser também. Eu espero que você goste, vamos ver. Uh, the, the interpretation of double slit experiment um, using the Copenhagen interpretation, the classical, like the, the typical um, uh, quantum theory interpretation, uh, does not predict consciousness at all. Uh, the idea that because there's a measurement, there's a collapse of a waveform, and all of a sudden things manifest, um, it, you know, is used all the time in the spiritual world and by many uh, speakers, including physicists that are speaking on the subject, as if it predicted the event of consciousness, and it doesn't at all. Actually, those equations say that it's completely random, that the universe is completely random, and that like there, it doesn't even predict the event of the organization of one biocell. Forget the, you know, the expression of consciousness of, or self-awareness or anything. So it, it, it's, it's completely inaccurate to use that to try to explain consciousness and, and, um, and, and in any way, shape or form these mathematics don't predict consciousness. They, when, they, when physicists say well, observation, they mean measurement and, um, and so a measurement was made and when that, you know, in, in, in the mathematics are are based on statistical analysis and random functions that don't predict that there is, you know, any organization or anything that has anything to do with consciousness. So, so it's it, it, it's wrong, and and not only is it, is it wrong, uh, it, it it um it it undermines the fact that the Copenhagen interpretation is incorrect to start with, meaning that that this interpretation of the quantum field uh, I'm very much opposed to. Um, I, the, all the result of the double slit experiment can be explained with fluid dynamics. Showed that to Einstein and, 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 um, and, uh, and, and, uh, and, and Planck and others at the time, but it was ignored, um, although he was an incredible scientist as well. You know, I, the, the, the information field of the quantum field, it acts like a fluid. And the key is to actually support um, something else in the doubles than, than the Copenhagen interpretation, is to actually understand that this is called, um, you know, uh, a, a, the, the, this, this new understanding, this fluid dynamic understanding of the double slit experiment gives us the key actually to understand the feedback dynamics of the Planck field. So basically, yeah, in, in matter is information and that my equations demonstrate and proves directly, and I'm using the word proof um, very, very uh, uh, strongly because uh, you know, those equations actually show that the proton, the nuclear of an atom, which is the mass of the atom, 
is actually an agglomeration of Planck information. And these equations are extremely precise. They predict the, radi the radius of the proton more precisely than any other equations on the planet today. And, um, you know, they are showing that matter is just uh, Planck information orbiting at certain velocities. And um, so if you wanted to say that matter is information, then, then I would start to agree. Um, and, and that um, because matter is information and because there is feedback in the structure of information, um, because there's feedback between the surface of the event horizon of the proton and the inside, the volume of the proton, because there's information coming out and information going in, the result, like the system, the network of the universe is what we call consciousness. And so it, it, it's natural, it's expected that eventually matter would organize in more and more complex systems that eventually would, um, would behave and have uh, evidence of self-awareness. Uh, as the complexity got high enough that the, there was enough information moving through the system that would l start to look like a self-aware being. Um, so it's not, uh, it's not the chicken or the egg. It's never the chicken or the egg. It's always both. It's always matter and information. It, matter is information. And so it, it's, there's no separation there. There's no need to like imagine that there's some kind of like first and second. Um, there is no such thing. We live in an infinite universe that has infinite boundaries. There is no beginning and there's no end. There's no start and end. There's no, there's not, not, there's not even that in your own life, meaning that you might think of yourself starting when you were born and ending when you die, but the fact is, is that the information that makes you up all along, including when you die, is still present, like not one atom has been lost, not, nothing we can see has been lost, so, so the information is still present, um, and, and it's present at all times. And basically, what we call matter is just uh, a very specific dynamics of the field of information that we're baiting in. And when that dynamics gets complex enough, it become it appears as if it was self-aware, like we are. And you know, but the self-awareness is there all along, like, uh, and that's why the system can self-organize in extremely complex ways. And that is absolutely not accounted for in physics, meaning there's nothing in quantum theory or relativistic equations that predicts any of it, that it predicts even self-organizing things like planets and, you know, stars and so, or, or, or even, you know, um, the way um, biology em emerged, you know, none of that is present in our current theory, because our current theory says that it's all random, and under random functions, that stuff doesn't self-organize at all, um, and it, it doesn't produce the complexity we see around us, and so on. It has to have feedback to get that. So, you know, I mean, it, it, it's, it's an important subject, and it's complex, and I could go on forever, but, um, you know, that's... That's my rant. Muito interessante, não é mesmo, gente? Bom, muito obrigado pela sua presença aqui no canal. A gente se vê amanhã. Um grande abraço e até mais.